Hi guys, uh, Patek here. Today's video will be a book review for Dragon Mage by ML Spencer. So there is a reason why I'm doing this because uh, today is actually my birthday and it's also the book birthday for Dragon Mage. So I thought might as well do a book review on this book because I have talked about this book several times now. So yeah, and there is something that I want to talk about because there is an update for this book is that Dragon Mage is no longer a one-off standalone uh, for those who have messaged me saying and asking whether it's still a standalone or not, uh, no, it's no longer a one book standalone. Although it still works incredibly well as a standalone, but it is now a series called Riven World. So I'm sorry for that. And the next book in the series is called uh, Champion of the Fallen, and it will come out in January 2022. So yeah, let's get started with the book review. Dragon Mage, as you guys probably know already, in my opinion, was awesome. ML Spencer takes everything that we love about classic epic fantasy and it transforms the novel into something that's truly incredible, epic, and satisfying. Before Dragon Mage, I haven't read anything by ML Spencer, but this doesn't mean that I'm not familiar with her name because uh, ML Spencer is mostly known for her work on a grimdark fantasy series called The Red War Saga and also Chaos Cycle which I've heard great things about, but well, I haven't read them because you know how it is with my infinite TBR pile. But uh, when I saw the cover reveal of Dragon Maid, the cover art is illustrated by Suti Watdeka Champu and designed by Shanti King. And then I heard that Dragon Mage will be an epic fantasy standalone, so I thought, wow, I had to try this book. And although I haven't read any of her grimdark fantasy books yet, I know one thing for sure is that ML Spencer must write more epic fantasy because this is her first epic fantasy and it's something that's amazing in my opinion. The plot of Dragon Mage revolves around Aram Raid, a misfit boy who lives in a small fishing village who sees everything in colors and he loves nuts. All his life, Aram has been shunned and treated harshly because uh, he's different and all Aram desires in his life is simply to make friends. However, there is just so much more to Aram, there is just so much more. He has the power to challenge the gods that he doesn't know yet. I think you can already surmise from what I just described that Dragon Mage is a classic epic fantasy that's told with the modern voice and my god, it feels so good to read something that's good like this again. There is just so much to love in Dragon Mage. ML Spencer includes many familiar tropes such as a coming of age story arc for both Aram and Marcus, the two main characters, and then there is also a chaining montages, there is also magic school, there is also a wise mentor with a harsh past, there is also a missing father, there is an impending doom. All of them are in this tome, and they work incredibly well for the book. And I could tell you a lot of things on why these tropes uh, still work well up to this day. I mean, they become tropes in the first place because, well, they work. But when it comes down to it, it's always the characters that won my heart for the book. Always the characters. It's almost always the case, and it's the same case here. Spencer's characterizations were just magnificent. It's practically impossible for me not to like Aram. He's just such a lovable character, and it's not just him. Marcus, the other main character, is super lovable character. I mean, we all need a Samwise Gamgee in our life, right? I always say that, and Marcus is the Samwise Gamgee of this book. Although there is a kinda chosen one trope to Aram characters, but let me assure you that Aram isn't uh, Gary's too. He suffers a lot. He suffers a lot in this book, both mentally and physically. I don't think I've read a book where the main character fainted so many times as much as the one in this book. So much. But I love Aram. His passion for books and nuts are so intoxicating and there is something that's so cherishable about the way he treasures friendship and this is where Marcus comes in. Connection and friendship doesn't come easy to Aram because he's neuroatypical and his friendship with Marcus becomes one of the most precious things in the world for him. I'm not kidding, the friendship between Marcus and Aram were just awe-inspiring to read. They're some of the best friendship I've ever read in a fantasy novel. It is one of the driving force of the narrative and not only Marcus, there is also a lot of other side characters in this book that are just so easy to love. Plus, Dragon Mage also features a bond with dragons that goes as deep like the one you see in, let's say, How to Train Your Dragons. It is that good, it's just so amazing to me. Responsibilities, friendship, and overcoming one weaknesses are evident themes within this book, and I think Amber Spencer has executed them marvelously. The novel feels like uh, Spencer's love letter to epic fantasy, and we can see traces of its love in every part of the narrative, including the world building. The world in Dragon Mage was torn apart long ago by an event known as the Sundering, and because of the Sundering, there are now two worlds in this book. The first one is the world above where a human being resides and then the second one is the world below where the magical being resides. And look at this map. The map is done by the author herself. 
Aren't they so cool? There is more than enough originality and charms that uh, Spencer imbued into the book to make the book stand out on its own. What Spencer did with the magic system, in my opinion, was brilliant and simple because uh, the magic in this book is super powerful. And to balance things out, uh, M.L. Spencer includes the role of a shield, someone who's completely impervious to all magic. But they cannot use magic, but at the same time, they have the power to negate uh, the magic users for becoming too powerful. And there's more to this, of course, but I think I will leave it for you to find out for yourself. And I also love reading the action sequences, the tornado of flame, the lightning spear, and much more spectacular exhibition of magic were conjured within this book. And the intense aerial battles while riding dragons, a lot of dragons, were absolutely absorbing to me. And the prose just flows so well throughout the whole book, it's accessible and it made the book never felt boring to me. And one last thing, there were sections in this book that revolves around blacksmithing and it was done in details. I absolutely love this part because as someone who loves watching a weapon and armor creation process on YouTube, uh, it seems like ML Spencer has done a lot of research towards this and it shows in the writing. I loved it. It was so good. Uh, overall, I will conclude by saying that Dragon Mage is a compelling epic and immensely satisfying fantasy novel that will remind readers why they love classic epic fantasy in the first place. And that's all for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching my book review, and I hope uh, this will compel you into reading the book because, well, in my opinion, it was so good. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Uh, let me know what you think of this review, and I hope you will get this book and enjoy it as much as I did. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.